Okay, let me <coughs> start then with um, Uh, this is uh, the equivalent uh, of a management uh, committee, uh, uh, Tanaka just told me. So um, uh, keep a lookout at the form that is being transmitted, uh, because the, the form you have to sign and then you get paid. So the, the usual stuff uh, to get paid for today. Okay, welcome everybody. I can hear now that my microphone is working. <coughs> this is the, the final uh, uh, conference, the final <coughs> meeting, even though we uh, will continue for another four weeks till the 11th uh, of October. Um <coughs> I will uh, give you uh, an overview uh, and what I did is uh, I, I, I uh, went back to the PowerPoint uh, that I was given when I had to uh, defend uh, the, the proposal for the cost committee in Brussels. Now, that was quite square, uh, scary because <coughs> the proposal, uh, although it, <coughs> it had my name on it, was actually written mainly by <coughs> Elke Geweiler, Katrien de Puyt, and Orne Dijkstra, they made sure that the, the scores for the proposal were quite high. So basically all I could do was make a mess of it. So I, I, I had to make sure that uh, my presentation was good enough to, to keep the scores high enough, because not every proposal would have been accepted. So I went back to those uh, <coughs> slides and I'm, I'm giving you, this is what I uh, will do in these uh, 45 minutes. So this is what we um, uh, gave cost. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking back at it and you can <coughs> wonder whether the points we raised then uh, <coughs> are still valid, are still uh, reasons for uh, our activities. Computers and the availability of the World Wide Web have significantly changed the conditions for the production and reception of dictionaries. I guess that held five years ago and it still uh, holds. We go from print to XML. Dictionary users are rapidly showing changing behavior from using ebooks to using the internet. Uh, we should, uh, and, and there's a growing gap uh, <coughs> um, uh, people not using dictionaries. I, uh, uh, back then, I, I used my, my students, and I can still use them. My students simply won't use a dictionary. I can tell them that their English is much improved if they would actually uh, use a good Dutch-English dictionary, but they won't. Um, even though the dictionaries are online available through the university library is basically too much. Uh, to my <coughs> uh, frustration, my own daughter even uh, didn't use uh, dictionaries, although my wife was a translator, so there were lots of dictionaries upstairs. She was uh, lying on the couch uh, and using internet. Now, this is what we <coughs> had to deal with. And uh, we were saying to Brussels, uh, this is a, a sort of negative thing, but there are also more positive reasons <coughs> to uh, give us money. Uh, we, dictionary makers, I mean we, I mean you, clearly not me, but you, uh, dictionary makers are using advanced IT tools to make dictionaries. However, there is a lack of a common research paradigm, common standards and solutions for e-lexicography. I, I don't know whether we changed the field, but I, I think that over the, the past few years we contributed to uh, this, uh, um, to creating standards, to create contacts, uh, 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 contacts in Europe between uh, dictionary makers. So this was enough reason um, uh, to, uh, to in, in itself, this was enough reason for uh, the cost committee to do it, but this, uh, I must admit, uh, was giving them some extra. 
because cost is, of course, a European uh, project, um, we were talking about the, uh, the dictionaries of countries uh, being basically isolated, uh, uh, isolated entities and whether we could create uh, a more pan-European uh, uh, view on uh, vocabularies. <coughs> and that, of course, was something that uh, attracted uh, the, the committee. Um, again, whether we uh, are close to doing that, I, I don't think so, but um, uh, perhaps the awareness that uh, 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 we are not isolated countries, but that we share a lot uh, also in our dictionaries has grown over the last few years. Now, uh, you, you don't only say uh, why, but you also, of course, uh, give slides on how you uh, organize everything. Uh, now, this uh, we had four working groups with <coughs> nice names, um, and you are all part of one or more working groups. And this especially uh, was uh, an, a nice, impressive uh, slide. Katrin, uh, uh, did you make this slide, or did Elke? Yeah, yeah. It it <coughs> it felt for me some sort of a homecoming. Uh, I. Uh, uh, Early in the Clarent project, I worked uh, together with Tamas Farari and Peter Wittenberg, uh, Wittenberg, and we also created this, or they created this type of uh, uh, slides. It, it looks impressive, and it probably is impressive. But as you can see, it uh, makes clear where the working groups are positioned. So I think it's a, a clever uh, slide if you have time to look at it. Now it was only a few seconds and then we uh, go on. And of course this, everybody is working with everybody, also very impressive. And I think that in fact uh, we did, not only by being a member of more than one working group, uh, but over the years we <coughs> moved from uh, small workshops for one working group to shared workshops. Uh, and I think that in the end we managed to uh, have all these working groups uh, work uh, together. By the way, I, 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 I should say that uh, this slide, uh, it, it's my responsibility, this PowerPoint, but I got input from uh, Ishtok and Tanaka and Rute and Natalie and Vera and Robert, so everybody uh, chipped in. So, um, okay. That's my fault because I probably. <coughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, this is the situation now. Uh, 30 countries um, uh, involved in the cost project. We have till uh, the 10th of October, and I, I guess that some of you have uh, noticed that we are still uh, doing stuff. Though there are uh, still there are still ways of traveling that we uh, can that you can ask for uh, ask Tanaka and and she will explain to you. But you have to be quick because it's only four weeks from now. Um, but let's go back. <coughs> when uh, some of you were there in Brussels, when our first meeting was there, <coughs> uh, this was the, the baseline. We had 20 countries at that point uh, in 2013. We had 45 management committee members. Uh, there was a gender balance of 57 male, 40% female. Uh, I now realize that uh, uh, um, um, 2017 makes this distinction male-female uh, a sensitive one. Uh, I mean, this is what Europe is doing, but nowadays we would probably use different terms. Um, uh, early career investigators, four out of 45, and the division uh, over the working groups. Uh, it was already visible then that working group three was uh, the most popular. 
So 87 uh, people signed up. <coughs> um, four, year uh, four years later, there are 30 countries, as, I, uh, saw, as you saw on an earlier slide. <coughs> uh, 19 management committee members, including substitutes. The, the gender balance is almost uh, uh, equal, 50-50. There's a, <coughs> um, a huge increase in early career investigators, 28%. And you see a lot more people in the working groups where the working group three is still the biggest one. Okay. Uh, uh, Ishtok has added something that uh, became important over uh, in, the, in the last two years, uh, the number of uh, uh, countries uh, which um, uh, follow under the definition of inclusiveness. So 13 of the 30 countries. Yeah, Ishtok, what is the precise definition of inclusiveness countries? If 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 I'm if I'm politically incorrect, th these are the areas where the European community sees that not enough uh, research money is going to. So they, they want to increase uh, uh so we are we are talking about for instance, Slovakia, uh, as a country where relatively less percentage-wise money is uh, in, in research funds is going to that country than other countries. And the, the target was to, to increase uh, <coughs> the uh, participation of those countries in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. Israel is clearly not part of that. I mean, I... I noted that there are at least two ERCs uh, just awarded last year, so you, you're getting your fair uh, uh, share of the re uh, European research uh, uh, money. More. <laughs> 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 yeah. But you're not saying that it's going to the wrong people. <laughs> um, this slide is, uh, is made by uh, Ishtok. Uh, uh, every red dot is probably an institution. Ishtok, every, every red dot is an institution from which people uh, participate in this uh, <coughs> uh, action. Yeah. So you see fair coverage uh, across uh, Europe. Okay, next slides are, are made by uh, uh, Natalie. I uh, later on, I realized that the figures that she has given are not precisely the same as the figures that I, I showed you before, but I'm sure that uh, her figures are much more uh, precise. Um, uh, cost always made a, a point of a, a gender balance, uh, and as you can see, the, the gender balance is sort of okay. Uh, it, it, it of course, reflects academia, which is uh, still predominantly male. And I'm saying that from a country where it's, it's very male. Uh, but I'm, I'm almost retiring, and then I will be followed up by a female professor. So, um, uh, so this, this is a, a fair uh, distribution at this moment. Um, in the steering commi <coughs> committee, uh, it's... Uh, almost the same, the, the management committee is not that good. And if you imagine that when you see me, you actually see Tanneke and Carol, the figures for the <coughs> steering committee are predominantly female and not male. Um, and, and that's a, a very important, most of the six action meetings were or, uh, organized by female uh, researchers. <coughs> Now this was uh, a bit surprising to me, the, the, the male-female uh, division uh, in, the, in the working groups. It, what is remarkable is that uh, if we assume that in working group three, uh, one and three, it's sort of equivalent. Uh, working group two uh, is unbalanced, just as working group four is unbalanced, but in the other, in the other way. I, I have no... Uh, okay, if I'm exaggerating a little bit, this is the future and women are focused on the future. Okay, 
Uh, early career investigators. Another point that is very important for the cost action. <coughs> and so they were uh, uh, very happy uh, that, that uh, our figures were relatively uh, good. Uh, so there is 25% uh, um, <coughs> <coughs> early career investigators under a definition that I, I can't remember uh, anymore. Uh, uh, and you have some figures about uh, whether or not they <coughs> participated in short-term scientific missions. Um, in the end, I think, uh, I didn't knew that before, but I have the feeling that uh, the training schools were actually uh, very good and very successful. Uh, in, in when we wrote it, it, the training schools were there, but I, 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 I realized that I didn't <coughs> envisage what it would be, uh, but in the end, uh, I think it worked very well. So this was the first uh, training school in Lisbon in 2015. <coughs> um, uh, in, in bold is Vera, because Vera is, was the person who, who organized it, probably. Um, uh, and here you get the figures uh, of the people who went to the training school. So there were quite a number of applications. In the end, 22 uh, trainees were uh, uh, attended, uh, and these are the figures uh, over the countries. Uh, when you, uh, will this PowerPoint will become online, when you see the figures of the three training schools, you will see that uh, certain countries are absent. So, I mean, it struck me, for instance, that uh, in the, uh, from the Netherlands there was only one participant in Ireland and the other two, uh, there were no participants from Ireland. So I, I guess that that sort of reflects how lexicography, how lexicology is uh, its status in a certain country. I don't know. I mean, perhaps we shouldn't draw too much conclusions out of that. Um, training School 2016, uh, Ljubljana, uh, Simon organized it, and it was attached to a, um, a computational linguistics conference that I forgot. W which was it, Simon? L LREX, perhaps, yeah. These are the figures for um, uh, 2016, and I'm not sure that the figures are, are correct. So, uh, This is the last one, Ireland. Uh, the lexi lexical and phraseological landscape of old boundaries. That was working group four uh, with a, a, a big uh, training team <coughs> and uh, 17 trainees uh, attendant with this division. Uh, you see that mainly the, the young uh, uh, researchers are female. But you will also recognize that if you teach in university that the, the, the majority of uh, students is female. Short-term scientific missions. Um, this is uh, Tanaka's responsibility. Uh, these are the figures, and I was actually quite impressed. Uh, we, and I think that Cost was also impressed, that we managed to uh, have so many short-term uh, scientific missions, uh, given the very limited amount of money we had, and the number of days is also impressive that people uh, visited. And these are the places that they visited. The figures for 2017 are wrong because we are still awarding short-term scientific missions. So that will be uh, bigger uh, in the end when we uh, give the final figures. Okay. Um, <coughs> what were the reasons for the actions? Going back again to uh, a slide that I, uh, I copied from uh, 2013. Uh, lack of systematic networking and coordination efforts in the field of e-lexicography causes duplication of efforts. Yes, and I think that what the cost action did was improve that. Dictionaries of smaller languages will be able to rely on established standards and methods. I actually don't have an idea whether this is established, but that is something uh, you, you 
can tell uh, me or others in the steering group about. Enable cooperation and exchange of resources, technologies and experience, yes. <coughs> the the short-term scientific missions, the workshops, everything we did greatly uh, um, uh, attributed to, to this. Increase access to authoritative dictionaries through a European dictionary portal. I will not show you the European dictionary portal because uh, uh, it will be presented after my talk. Develop new editorial practices for representing the common heritage of the languages of Europe. It's a bit uh, uh, ambitious, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not sure that we uh, that we uh, really did that. Um, results. Um, I've I've taken a few uh, results. Uh, from the different working groups. This is only a small part of what is actually uh, done. Uh, <coughs> and, and you can see most of it on, on, the, on the website. Uh, of course, the European Dictionary Portal, Working Group 1. There is also, for instance, a, a, to give you an example, uh, a, a publication uh, by uh, Bob, Hendrik and Orne uh, in the uh, Routledge Handbook of Lexicography. There is a start of a playground for lexical data on GitHub, etc., etc. This is, this is also there to, uh, to show you that over those four years, we actually did quite a lot together with other frameworks. So we, we worked a lot with groups in Daria, uh, and, and I think that that is uh, as important. There are surface of corpus tools, working group three. Uh, a book uh, 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 already published in working group four. There's this joint workshop with the Parsim cost action. Um, and uh, of course, I, I think the, the, the biggest result that we could have imagined the uh, uh, awarding of the uh, Horizon 2020 uh, proposal, ELEXIS, European Lexicographic uh, Infrastructure, which is in now in the process of being uh, signed. So I guess it will start still this year? Hmm? January. January, okay. Um, and not doing uh, injustice to uh, others, I think that Simon was the main <coughs> Uh, writer of this proposal, with, I heard in the background, uh, a lot of help from Toma and Carol. Of course, others have contributed it, but it's, it's I think, uh, a very nice uh, result uh, of this uh, cost action, uh, and it's actually the best result possible to continue the work that we have done uh, in the past four years. Um, and of course, uh, that is something that not all of you uh, have heard of, not all of you have realized. Uh, uh, only uh, a few weeks ago, <coughs> we finally got the, uh, the letter that we were granted a final uh, action dissemination of 9,000 euros. Uh, with those 9,000 euros, which must be spent in the coming years, uh, uh, three things will be done. Um, this conference will be um, videoed, videotaped, um, uh, uh, and, and uh, Ishtok and Carol uh, formulated that proposal. There will be a book by Chris, Alina and Jeffrey, and there will be another book, but the, the, the first one is a real book, and the other one is, a, is an electronic uh, book uh, that uh, Evelyn will uh, take uh, charge of, uh, the biodiversity and linguistic diversity knowledge discovery. So um, over the, the coming uh, 10 months, 12 months, uh, uh, people will still be working on the, on the cost action. Uh, uh, in this uh, final action dissemination, but officially on uh, the 11th of October, the, the funding for the cost action as such will, will stop. Okay, this was uh, an overview. Um, did I don't imagine that you have questions about it, but is there uh, anything clearly missing from the presentation that you say, well, 
how on earth could he have forgotten that? No, everybody's satisfied? Okay, good. <laughs>